Hey guys, this is Anon again, and uh, I have a couple games today, uh, or it's really just kind of stealing victory uh, from the, the clutches of defeat here, so I thought it would be uh, kind of fun to share. Uh, both are on Middleburg, uh, working kind of in the hill area, um, but one in different ways. So honestly, I f chose this Chi Re game just for kind of the last three or four kills, because uh, I think it's a nice clinic on staying calm uh, to get uh, to steal the win when you're down by quite a few tanks and using the ridge line in these tanks that have the great gun depression. So um, I'm peeking, sneaking up here behind bushes uh, because we had a lot of team go down to town. So I'm hoping to, to kind of steal a couple shots off um, before I get spotted and kind of have to readjust. Uh, so the Centurion pushes up, and pretty quickly my only help uh, bails down into the, the base area, or the cap area. I've got a TD coming up behind me, so right now I'm just trying to be patient and hold off waiting for him. Uh, their Chiri peeks up and unfortunately spots me, so I have to readjust a little bit. Uh, both teams are pretty spread out. Uh, so I'm also kind of waiting to see where it, it falls at this point. I can see that our guys in town actually have them outnumbered. So I'm hoping to work with this 8-8 on the top to uh, at least hold and keep some of these tanks uh, from running down and, and getting our guys in town. Because I know we have at least a couple uh, medium tier uh, tanks up here. So the Chiri is poking out and the 8-8 is doing a good job of shooting him. So it lets me poke around and you get a full clip into his side. Uh, this has been really kind of a fun tank so far. I didn't think I was going to like it uh, because of how large it is with an autoloader. I thought you'd have to stay exposed for too long, but luckily with the gun depression it lets you still really protect yourself. So the 8-8 pushes up, the Centurion is here, their Chi Re is bailed out. So I'm going to work up and try and shoot down onto his engine bay here. I take a shot to do it, but I know based on reload it'll let me uh, empty those last two shots into him. He continues to push around. Now, unfortunately, even though they had the numbers advantage uh, early on, our team wasn't able to take advantage in town. So uh, we needed to clear the hill so we would have this ridge line to work from. So now I can really make the Chiri sing at this point. It's it's what it's great. All these uh, Japanese tanks are so great at is the gun depression and working ridge lines. So I can poke up here. I'm trying to scoot back to cover and also get shots back on base because uh, I know there's uh, that Chiri sitting down in there. I missed the first shot unfortunately and the second shot. Uh, the auto loader can do a lot of damage if you unload the whole clip but it definitely has uh, some pretty high dispersion. All right, getting a couple tanks on the backside. My A8 unfortunately did exactly the opposite of what we really should have done in this point and pushed down into base. So now it's they're kind of sitting ducks. Uh, lose the Indians, so it's four to two, and uh, they're really outnumbered uh, to be that exposed. There's nothing I can do for him. Running down would get us both killed. So I'm working on that 43 on the backside. He disappears. Uh, got the IS6 that's exposed himself. Uh, to get around behind our 880. He must not know I'm here, which is pretty fantastic uh, for me to get some shots into him. It's also going to let him circle around the 88, uh, but there's only so much I can do. So now it's that great one versus three situation. I know I've got a KV-4 and an IS-6, both about half health, and the 43 is a one shot. So I'm trying to circle back around here and just move them around. I figure they're going to cap and so I know I can shoot from both sides down into the cap uh, and try and keep uh, resetting it. Also lets my camera reset, so now they don't know where I am. Not perfectly anyway, so I can just kind of peek over and see if we've got shots in, in the base area, and I do. Got some great shots uh, continuing on the IS-6, just starting to whittle them down. Again, just kind of working slowly with it. Dodge the 43. I'd really like to get him here just so a 1 versus 2 situation is so much better. Alright, get him. I know the IS-6 knows where I'm at, so I want to scoot around to the other side. I, uh, I'm also kind of counting base here. I 
I don't think they're both on cap, so I figure there's a chance the KV4 is going to come up through the middle. I switched to, to premium just to get that extra pen. Uh, and sure enough, there's the KV4. Uh, but he's exposed himself so beautifully. Unfortunately, one of my rounds misses, so I'm kind of forced to take a shot. But I really want to finish him off here, so now it's just one versus one. Also take advantage. I know I'm going to move to this other side for cover. So I go ahead and reload that clip so that once I'm up here, I have a, a full clip to unload against him on. I also know the IS-6 was on the other side when I shot him, so I'm kind of hoping he scooted over here. And sure enough, there he is. Let's me get those shots in. Uh, step back just as he starts to aim, which is exactly what I want. Now, I've got him in a good spot, so I could stay here, but I really... And I'm taking some blind shots. I just am really trying to be careful so that he doesn't get me. Try a few HE, trying to hit the top of his turret. Uh, but at this point, he's so set up looking at me in this direction. and I mean, he could probably put an HE shell in me and kill, so I pop back over to the other side again. Really just trying to go back and forth and confuse him a bit so that he doesn't really know once my camera resets where I'm going to pop up at. Again, just using that great gun depression, it, uh, I mean, it really saves me in this game. It, it, it's a huge tank with a big profile, but when you work the ridge lines, you aren't showing that much of the profile. So I'd hoping he'd flipped back over again, or at least had his butt sticking out enough, and he hasn't. So what I decide to do is run into town, because I figure no matter what, he's looking up at the hill. So I'm hoping I can get a sneak shot in. Doesn't happen. I spot him, and that actually could have been terrible. If he'd have spotted me, I would have been in a rough position, because he could. this whole plan to come down into town wouldn't have worked. But since he doesn't spot me, I can come right up to the back of him and get that nice finishing shot. So uh, it wasn't necessarily the best setup, um, but really working the, the ridge lines and using the great gun depression that these Japanese tanks have uh, allowed me to, to really come back from a four on one situation and win it. So uh, good damage. I've actually had higher damage games without the mastery in this Chiri, but uh, I had a lot of spotting probably at the end. I would imagine I didn't really switch over to those stats. Alright, so now I'm going to switch over to the T-30. Uh, same map on Middleburg, this time I'm uh, platooned with uh, Mastiff. So as usual with these good gun depression uh, tanks, we're going to go ahead and head up into the hills. Our mediums are kind of going all over the place here, which seems to be par for the course anymore, but that's okay. You just kind of have to learn to deal with it, plus we have very defensible tanks here. When we don't have a lot of medium support, usually we'll poke up on this hill just to see if we can get a few of their mediums to charge us because it really puts them in a firing squad kind of area. Turns out that we only lost one tank down, so that's a pretty good situation. Uh, didn't notice at first, but we've got a, a pretty good player in that E50 on the other side. So we're able to get a couple quick shots into him, which is uh, pretty advantageous to us early on in the game. I'm going to start scooting up uh, and work these other ridge lines, just because now that they know we're here and we've put a couple shots into them, they're probably not going to rush us. So just trying to get into a situation to shoot a little bit nicer. AT-15 pokes over a little bit too far. Uh, this is another good ridge line to work. I don't use it in mediums, typically, uh, because it's too far back. Um, but for TDs and heavies, uh, it lets you stay pretty protected. So, again, uh, anytime you see a great player on the other side you and you have a shot on them, you should uh, work that direction just because it's a dangerous gun that you won't have to deal with later. It'd be great to get him here, but we're just kind of trading stuff back and forth. I'm really waiting for the other for the red team to hopefully make a mistake. A um, couple of our tanks start dropping down, hoping for the flank. Probably a little early to do that, but uh, it's it's not a horrible idea. Missed the 59 shot. 
again, everyone's pretty protected here, uh, so not going to get a lot of moves. Our flank goes around, but pushes up a little bit too far, uh, so some of the tanks have to drop back to get him. Uh, they, he probably, they probably could have taken a few safer shots, uh, but because of that, and because it pulls a few off on the back, we scoot forward again. <laughs> this 103 is having a really hard time figuring out how to drive. I'm not intentionally blocking him, but he keeps changing angles, so trying to help kind of scoot him so he can stay protected. And now we're in kind of this peekaboo war. Which, uh, normally on a TD, I don't really want to do that, but uh, in this T-30 you can really drive it like a heavy with that strong turret, so we're going to keep just kind of working back and forth in here. That and we're really down. We've, we've got a tank capping at this point, which isn't going to be helpful to us at all. So we really just need to hold them all here as, as long as we can. I figure at some point a couple reds are going to drop down for the cap, which will put us in a, a better numbers position to keep fighting this out. So now we're down th <laughs> 3 to 5, but the good news is a lot of them are... or 3 to 6, sorry. A lot of them are nice and weak, so take the time to aim, get that great 59 shot. Uh, Should have probably shot HE into it, but um, <laughs> luckily it worked out anyway. Again, just kind of continuing the peek boom area. And now we're starting to whittle them down. There was no reason to rush out and uh, give them good shots on us. We're both in defensible positions. Mastiff's doing a good job behind me. No one's pushing super hard. Uh, so it lets us really start to win the war of attrition here. AT-15 gets himself really exposed. I switched to AG to kill him, but luckily Mastiff gets him first. Here's my favorite moment of the game. Perfect ammo rack shot. <laughs> now we're actually, we were up a tank for a second, but now we have this great ridgeline advantage. Um, we've both got good health. Uh, the E50 is going to start bugging out again because he's a good player. He knows he needs to relocate, so we decide to go ahead and push into cap. Take the time to get the the tiger two shot and now we have worked our way back from a six on two or a six on three i guess at one point uh mostly a six on two because our our help wasn't really helpful uh it's now being up a tank he goes in and stays in cap and i just peek out uh hoping he wasn't able to get up the hill fast enough and i can get a, a backward shot but we're both in very very slow tanks so there's no reason for us to go chasing him all over the map didn't even get a spot, didn't get spotted, so I know he's probably gotten around the back side of the hill and is going to work up and shoot down, because that's exactly what I would do. So we decide to just go defensive at this point. We have enough time to cap as long as he doesn't reset it. So again, this is all about just setting up. Luckily there's two of us. If it was one, it'd be much trickier to defend nicely. But instead it lets him, lets Mastiff protect that side of the base. I'm setting up on this side with HE loaded because I know he barely just needs <laughs> blown over and his tank will explode. And just kind of aiming through these windows because it's most likely he's going to set up at one of the extreme sides uh, to try and get a shot down on cap. Because if he can get one of us then he's in pretty good position. Waiting, waiting. The, low, the Obviously, the higher the number goes, the more likely it is he's going to come charging in, which would be perfect. And there he comes, exactly where I was hoping he would be, shooting through the little windows, and I actually missed the shot, which is terrible. Uh, luckily, Mastiff's the one that had been sitting on cap the entire time, so it didn't really kill us time-wise. Uh, but it was a pretty quick snapshot. Once the reload happens, I'm really surprised to find out that he stayed in the same position, but uh, it let us win. It also is a good example of the difference uh, kind of in the playstyle between the first game and the second game, uh, how that E50 played. Uh, I know he was low on time, but if he'd have popped over to the other side, he had a much better chance to uh, shooting me or Mastiff to reset the cap. So nice game. It was inflated a little bit by that T54 uh, ammo rack. Um, but I will take that anytime I can get it. And uh, another fun set of games.